being recorded. So if, if you don't want to be recorded, um, uh, unfortunately, this call is recorded and, and the entire session will be recorded and hosted on NavajoSafeWater.org. Um, so there's a little, a little pop-up that you should see right now. Um, so, so moving through there, I want to take a minute to introduce myself, our, our trainers, and, and why we're here. Uh, my name is Gabe Shoeships. I am from the, the Tributaries Network, kind of helping to facilitate this call today. Um, we have uh, folks from the Indian Health Service headquarters in the Navajo area, uh, David Harvey, Alvina Clark, Joe, and Jason Jansen. And from Weston Solutions, we have Wilson Yee. So if you all could go introduce yourselves real quick, it would be great. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Gabe. Um, my, my name is David Harvey. I'm the uh, Deputy Director of the Division of Sanitation Facilities Construction uh, with the Indian Health Service. Uh, and I'm located in Rockville, Maryland. And I've been uh, supporting the Navajo area and the uh, Navajo Nation Division of Community Development uh, for about uh, 18 months now in uh, increasing access to uh, safe water uh, points uh, targeted at uh, people who live in homes without piped water. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Right. Elvina, you want to go? Yeah, Elvina. Yes. Good morning. My name is Alvina Clark Joe. I'm the District Sanitarian Gallup Indian Medical Center. I've been there for three years. Prior to that, I was at Fort Defiance Indian Medical Center or Fort Defiance um, Medical Center, which is also known as Sehoto Medical Center. I was there for 16 years. I worked as a service unit sanitarian. Um, I have been working with IHS for 19 years. And I'm glad to be here. And I'm trying to do my best in answering questions in Navajo. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you, Alvina, for being here and, and for helping to translate into Navajo. Uh, Jason, are you out there? Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Jason Jansen. I'm working as the uh, point of contact for the Navajo Water Access Group. And uh, I, I work with the uh, Indian Health Services and at the uh, uh, Navajo Area Office. And I work uh, in, in relaying uh, information to the appropriate individuals to, to help uh, the sub offices and others in, in the chapters with their, their water, water issues. And I'm glad to be here and look forward to, to learning a lot with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And Wilson. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Wilson Yi. I'm a project manager at uh, Western Solutions. Um, been my pleasure to support um, IHS, NECA, um, DCDs, and CHR's work since July of, of last year on, on um, the water access mission. And I'm happy to be here to help um, provide additional information today. Thanks. Thank you, Wilson. And do we have any any folks from DCD or the Division of Community Development that might want to introduce themselves? If so, just go ahead and pop in. Or any uh, CHRs or community health representatives that want to introduce themselves? If um, if not, well, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. I think we'll go ahead and, and get started. We kind of have a team presentation here today, and uh, we'll be able to answer questions uh, both in the chat and um, and the time for Q and A out loud. And we'll have some uh, follow up at the end here. Um, so to kind of review 
kind of our, our objectives here. Um, just, a, just a general overview. We wanna provide uh, information on the project, an overview of what we're doing, um, answer all of your questions specifically about the project, uh, both describe how project services were allocated to chapters, uh, review chapter reporting status and services use, and discuss ways to improve service and delivery. And just to kind of go over, we've, uh, good morning, Ulysses. Thank you. Um, so we are, so kind of how the, how the day breaks down, I'll be sharing uh, a couple of training videos uh, that were that were produced uh, previous to this, uh, reviewing some of our outreach and reporting material. Uh, David will be discussing the project services allocation. Uh, Wilson will be discussing chapter and service use reporting and chapter support resources. Um, I'll follow up with some chapter recommendations and then we'll have some time for comments and discussion and any feedback that you might have. Um, and, and just a reminder, if, if you're requiring a record of attendance, um, please email NavajoSafeWater at nndcd.org. Um, so welcome Ulysses, welcome everybody else. I think with that, we can move into the, um, to our videos, right? All right, Gabe, you gonna start those or you want me to do that? Um, you have that pulled up if you do. Yeah, I need to remember how to I can do it just... share the audio piece. If you can do it, I'd appreciate it because my I'll do it. audio skills have melted down. <laughs> One second. So our first video is on how to use transitional water points. It's a short video. I just shared the link um, in case that's helpful, but I also may need some help if, uh, you know, where I'm not sure how to do the audio part, so. I got, I think I got it, yeah. Lo <laughs> Ejo has talked at this is again, Ezo or hot out a de yo kid. A yes, sir. They need kid to get a yard, the ash horde. Yea, go ash horde, best allow. 
Nehane, the kitas to get on it. When they need his day, don't they hit she, the kids to get on it. Do I quite get in Juno Bay or La? Need she don't hit me, the kids to get what I'll quite know. I don't eh, they choose not eh, so eh, the dash horde, Nehilla, Cardo Gis, a quagger abyss has asked to all that Hanakisiki, a day a choice not eh. I don't eat to be the hard lineage, Thank you. What a wonderful video. And uh, that video and more are hosted at navajosafewater.org. Um, if, if there's any questions on, on the video itself, please uh, type them in the chat or save them now, and I'm going to trans start transitioning into the second video. And the second video is the water point refresher training for chapter officials. And this video is in English. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the chapter training refresher video that is meant for chapter officials and CHRs who maintain the water points and provide information about the program to community members. Today, we're going to cover the goal of the program and why it's so important that people have access to safe drinking water. We're also going to go over the chapter water allowances and how those were calculated. And then we're going to cover the blue five gallon storage containers and the chlorine disinfection tablets that were provided to some of the chapters. We're also going to cover chapter responsibilities and provide additional resources. The Navajo Nation has an estimated 37,000 people without water, or about 20% of the population. Our goal is to increase access to safe drinking water for residents of homes with no piped water during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This includes free water, water storage containers, and disinfection tablets, if needed, to keep the water safe for human consumption in the home. Obtaining drinking water from sources supplied by a public water system that is regulated by the Navajo EPA helps ensure that the water is safe for you and your family. We have also worked to provide the chapters with educational materials and trainings, just like this one, about safe water. As part of the project, IHS is paying the water fees for people who live in homes without piped water. To help increase access to drinking water, over 50 new water points, called Transitional Water Points, or TWPs, have been installed as part of this project. At TWPs, IHS is paying the water bill in full every month until the maximum two-year water allowance is reached or until the COVID-19 public health emergency is declared over, whichever is sooner. 
If you aren't sure about your chapter's water allowance, you can refer to your beneficial use agreement or BUA, which I'll talk about more in a second. IHS will stop paying the water fees once the public health emergency is over or when you reach your maximum water allowance. After that, it's up to the chapter if they want to continue to operate the TWP at their own cost or close it. For a PWP, it's a little bit different. IHS is going to pay the monthly allowance that's shown on the BUA, and it's going to show up as a credit on your account each month for two years or until the public health emergency is over, whichever is sooner. Here's a copy of one of the beneficial use agreements for the water collection project, one of the BUAs. The chapter should have been provided a copy of each BUA for their reference. So here on the top line on the right, you can see that's where your monthly water allowance is going to be. Right below that is the two year. So you can refer to this and see how much water IHS is going to pay for monthly and then also the maximum. This was calculated based on the number of homes without piped water in your community. So each chapter is going to be different. Chapters with more homes are going to have a higher water allowance. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the items that were provided at each water point. That includes the hand sanitizer and the stand, a hose if you are at a TWP, and some chains and locks for security. Several signs were also installed, which you can see in this photo. The first sign talks about COVID-19 precautions and things that people should do to keep safe while they're filling their water containers. There is also a sign letting people know they can obtain their five gallon storage container at the chapter. And at some chapters, there is also a sign telling people they can ask for a disinfection tablet to be added to their container. It's also important to make sure everyone is following all the COVID-19 precautions while they're collecting their water or filling their water storage containers. This includes practicing safe physical distancing by keeping six feet away, wearing masks, and using the hand sanitizer provided. The signs that were installed will have this information on them as well. A majority of chapters will have received those blue five gallon storage containers. If you're not sure how many you received, you can refer to your BUA. In that top box on the right, it lists the IHS number of homes without piped water. We use this number to calculate the number of storage containers that we provided to you. That number can be found in the second box. This should match the number of storage containers that you received. And remember, it's one container per person. So if a home has five people, you can provide them five storage containers. When you hand out the storage containers to your community members, you wanna go over a few things about proper storage. So first, you wanna tell them to store the container off the ground away from dirt and dust and make sure that pets can't contaminate the water somehow. You also wanna tell them that they should only be using it for water. Don't fill it with other types of liquids or use it for agricultural purposes or anything else. It should only be used for drinking water and cooking water. Finally, you wanna have them clean and sanitize it before they return to the water point to refill it, and we'll go over that next. Here's a demonstration of how to sanitize the blue storage container. First, you want to measure four teaspoons of bleach with one gallon of water. Pour that into your storage container. We've already added some water into our storage container, so you can see here she's just adding the four teaspoons of bleach. Make sure that people are using regular unscented bleach. Any scented bleaches will not properly clean and sanitize the container. Next, put the spigot back on and shake the container around, making sure that all of the inside parts get wet from the bleach solution. Then let it sit for 30 seconds. Once the 30 seconds is up, you can dump the water out into the sink and let the container air dry. And that's it, you have just sanitized your container. You want to encourage people to clean and sanitize their container before coming to refill it at the water point. Here's a handout that you can provide along with the blue storage containers to your community members, and it covers the importance of getting your drinking and cooking water from a regulated source that's tested and that we know is safe to drink. This handout also refers to the NavajoSafeWater.org website, which has a ton of good resources. On the back, there are sanitizing and cleaning instructions on how to use the bleach solution to clean the storage container. You can find this handout on the NavajoSafeWater.org website. In addition to the blue storage containers, some chapters were also provided the chlorine disinfection tablets based on the chlorine test results from that water point. You can see some of the tablets in this photo. Chlorine kills the bacteria and viruses in water that could make you sick. 
If the chapter had a lower chlorine level, we recommend adding the chlorine tablets to the blue storage containers. The purpose of the tablet is to extend the time that chlorine is in the water and will prevent the growth of bacteria and viruses while it's being stored at that person's home. If you aren't sure if your chapter needed the disinfection tablets, you can go back to the BUA here, and right here is where it will tell you if disinfection tablets were required based on our chlorine tests that we conducted. It'll also tell you what your one-year supply was and the number of tablets that we provided. When a person comes to refill their blue five gallon storage containers, someone from the chapter can add one chlorine tablet to the container. After that, tell the person to wait 30 minutes for the tablet to dissolve, and then they can use it for cooking and drinking. Anytime a person to comes to refill their blue five gallon storage container, you can add a chlorine tablet. You only want to add the chlorine tablets to the blue five gallon storage containers. Any other containers might be different sizes or made of different materials that we didn't test, so the chlorine might not work the way it's supposed to. The blue containers were tested, and we know that the chlorine level is safe. Don't hand out any extra tablets. Keep them stored safely at the chapter house. Here's a handout that provides some information about the water disinfection tablets, including the purpose and how to use them. First, you want to fill the blue five-gallon container with water. Second, the chapter official or someone from the chapter will place one of the tablets into the container. Tell the person they should wait 30 minutes before using the water to make sure the tablet completely dissolves. After that, they can use it for drinking, cooking, and hand washing. Once the water has been in the container for about a week, they should dump anything that's left, sanitize and clean the container, and then bring it back to be refilled. The back of the handout also goes through some frequently asked questions about chlorine. Like, what are the health benefits of adding chlorine to the water? If someone asks this question, you can refer them to this handout and let them know that chlorine has been proven to reduce bacteria and viruses that can make you sick. That's why we're adding the chlorine tablet to keep your family healthy and prevent diseases. I won't go over the rest of the questions during this video, but if you'd like more information, please refer to the more detailed disinfection tablet video on the website. One more thing, if someone really does not want a chlorine tablet, you don't have to give it to them. It's not required, but it is highly recommended. So you can encourage them to take a tablet, but if they are against it, you don't have to force it. And again, don't hand out any extra tablets, only put them directly into the container when people are coming to refill them. Another important piece I want to cover are the reporting logs. So when you distribute the five gallon containers to your community members, we ask that you record their names, their address, or a rough description of the location of their home, how many containers you gave them, how many chlorine tablets you gave them, and the date. You don't have to return this form to us. This is more for your records, so you know which homes receive the five gallon containers and the homes that don't have piped water. You could also provide this information to your local IHS engineers to help fund future projects to get piped water to these. One log that we do ask you return to us is the monthly reporting form. So each month you should fill out this log with the number of containers provided that month, the number of disinfection tablets provided that month, the number of broken or defective containers and defective spigots that need to be replaced under the warranty. And this form should be submitted every month, and we're asking that you do it by the fifth of the month so we can start compiling all the data from the different chapters. You can submit it to this email address right there, which is ihsnavajosafewater at ihs.gov. You can also use the Navajo Safe Water website to report your monthly activities for the chapter. So in order to do this, you just go to navajosafewater.org and that will bring up this website. So once it loads, you can scroll down a little bit, you'll see all of these tabs. So go ahead and click the additional resources tab, which is the last option. Then you have to scroll up just a little bit in order to see this. And it says for chapter use only, report monthly distribution activities. And you can click on this hyperlink. That's gonna bring you to the survey and click open in browser. And then the questions will pop up. So at the top here, you'll see uh, the purpose and it's just to submit your monthly safe water collection and storage distribution activities for the storage containers and the disinfection tablets. And we're asking that you submit it by the fifth of the month. Um, and that way we can start looking at all the data from the different chapters. If you have any problems with the website, you can go to IHS, you can email IHSNavajoSafeWater at IHS.gov.
So let's start filling out the form. So just click this arrow right here, and that will bring a drop down that goes through just the basic information, like the submittal date. So let's say it's January and I'm reporting for my December activities. So it's Monday, January 4th, the time is seven o'clock. And I am reporting for the month of December. So I'll go ahead and click that in 2020. Uh, then it, you can just type in your name here, the name of the person submitting, the contact info, the contact phone number, and email address. So you just go ahead and fill in that information. Scroll down a little more, and this is where you select your chapter. So I'm going to say I'm through, since they helped me make some of this video. On the T, that will bring up all of the chapters that begin with the letter T. Here I'm selecting through, and once I continue to scroll down, it does say that there is a TWP, a new transitional water point, and that is correct. So onto the reporting part, go ahead and click that drop down, and it says here if you have not distributed anything, you can just enter a zero. So the number of water containers distributed during December, let's say they submitted ten or distributed ten. Water disinfection tablets, let's say they distributed 15. Number of water containers returned for warranty, let's say we had two defective containers. And the number of spigots returned, let's say we had three detective, defective spigots. And then here is a place where we can upload pictures of any of the broken containers or broken spigots uh, for the warranty. So you can uh, upload them here either by taking a photo or uploading it from your computer. And then the last part is just any general comments that you have here in this top box or any issues or concerns, you can type them. After that, you can just click the submit button and that will submit your monthly log and that's it. I've mentioned the Navajo Safe Water website throughout this video and it's a great resource if you're looking for more information. It has videos from President Nez, Navajo translations, and an interactive map of all the water points. You can look up your chapter and see the operating hours of the water point and also some pictures of the site. If you notice the hours or information is wrong on the website, you can submit changes there too. In the additional resources tab, there are handouts I talked about and the more detailed training videos. They provide additional information on the blue storage containers and what information to pass along to your community members. They also cover the disinfection tablets, the reporting requirements, and the beneficial use agreements. If you have any questions or concerns, you can email IHS Navajo Safe Water at IHS.gov. You can also contact your local IHS Office of Environmental Health and Engineering, whose contact information is on the screen. We hope this video helped review some important parts of the project. Thank you. And thank you again. What a wonderful video. Um, I wish it could be found at navosafewater.org. Uh, so I did want to um, maybe bring up some comments that showed up in the chat um regarding whether or not uh powerpoint slides would be made available and the answer is yes we will provide them on the, the website um www.navosafewater.org as well as this recording itself and um you know just apologies for the quality of the video um when you link it out from um the story map from the website it's it's clear i promise um and you know, we'll, we'll try to figure out what happened uh, next time. But uh, thanks for the comments. Yeah, thank, thank you for that, Wilson. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, make those available. Uh, we're going to hand it over to, oh, there's a question that, that came up from uh, Alberta Ballard. Um, so if, if we have five people in the household, five can get a container? That's right. And they did. And David says yes. Yes, That's Alberta. Correct. So all five are, are eligible for a container. Um, so we're gonna 
thank you for the comments. Um, we're going to hand it over to David, and he's going to talk about um, um, allocations. Great. We're going to get a little overview of how we came came about on the project, and uh, I'm going to try to get rid of people's faces here so I can see that. Okay. Um, so this uh, project started off uh, back in April. Um, the Indian Health Service and the Center for Disease Control um, uh, were invited by the Navajo Nation President and Vice President to assist with increasing uh, access to safe water during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, at the start of that, what we did is <clears throat> we did a field survey of uh, 110 chapters uh, to determine um, what safe water sources were available in the chapters for residents living in these homes without piped water to haul from. And <clears throat> what we found is, a, is about uh, a little over half of them did not have a, a water access point, uh, a safe water access point available. And uh, the, the remain the, the little under half did. Um, and so we uh, identified and recommended the installation of uh, a transitional water point, a smaller water point at the chapters that didn't have them and, and recommended providing uh, the free water access at those points. And additionally, we recommended providing free water access through the uh, permanent existing water points, <clears throat> the permanent water points, the existing water points that are, are, are were currently available. Uh, there were four chapters that, that chose not to participate in the in the uh, the event, so we were kind of focused in on on, on 106 chapters uh, receiving services. In the photo here, you'll see uh, up to the left, you'll see this is the a transitional water point. You saw one, uh, you see in a couple of pictures in a fence. Uh, some have bollards. Uh, the chapter kind of was involved in the decisions on which one uh, they would like to have have. Um, in the in the, the middle and on the right are two uh, different types of permanent uh, water points. So they are most of these points are located at chapter houses, and uh, and they, they have they they look different. Uh, inclusive, I think up to five of them are actually uh, NTUA operated water points that are at the chapter houses, and for which um, instead of like the video said of paying the water bill, we've provided. Uh, water access cards to uh, the chapters for distribution uh, to residents living in home piped water uh, without pipe water at those homes. If you have specific questions about that, we can talk, touch on that later on. Um, I don't have a slide on that, but I can, I can, we can touch on that later on during the call. So the the service allocations were based upon the number of homes without uh, piped water access that were that were in the IHS database. And uh, we assumed a population after kind of talking with the, the Navajo, uh, housing, uh, Navajo, Navajo Housing Authority that about four people per home uh, lived in, in, in each, each, each of these homes. And from that, we uh, estimated the number of containers that we would need to, to have. And so we came up with around 37,000 containers. And, and then from that, we used the number of people to estimate the volume of water uh, over basically a two-year period that uh, could be subsidized by the project. And we arrived at this volume of water by looking at standards from the World Health Organization that of volumes of water that were necessary to meet uh, health, uh, public health uh, measures of uh, providing sufficient water for drinking, cooking, cleaning, and waste disposal. And th those volumes of, of water were uh, based at seven gallons per person per day. That is significantly more water than can be collected in the five gallon blue containers that you've been seeing. And I'll, we'll, hit, we'll hit on this message a couple of times through the presentation. Uh, the, the water services that are being subsidized at the, the, the TWPs and the PWPs are uh, go beyond the volumes of water that can be collected in the five gallon containers. Uh, and so uh, this, those services should be uh, being provided by chapters to uh, fill larger containers. And there's a slide on this later, but larger containers of 100 gallons, 200 gallons, 300 gallons, uh, so that uh, families do not have to make multiple trips to the water points uh, and they can uh, you know, haul enough water for a, you know, a week or so uh, at a time to, to be to be able to be used. 
the smaller containers are primarily to ensure a smaller quantity of water is available for safe consumption, drinking and cooking, which is a higher needs to be a higher level quality than for use for like waste disposal or, or cleaning. <clears throat> Let me move on here. So um, we, we came up with the number of homes without piped water by looking at kind of some categories of, of, uh, of projects. Uh, unfinished projects that basically were unfinished construction projects. The projects were going on, but the, the, the work wasn't uh, hadn't completed, and hence there wasn't any water, you know, coming out of the kitchen sink. Uh, and we also looked at unfunded projects, projects that hadn't received any funding yet. And then we had another category, which was uh, looking at uh, you know, projects that uh, homes that were not on projects yet, but were in our data system that were. You know, within a hundred feet of a an NTUA water meter. So we assume that uh, there was a home there, and it probably should, you know, it wasn't connected uh, to the uh, to the NTUA meter, and uh, hence we would have to have this. And so they would have it would, wouldn't have water in it. Um, it's important to know is that the, the chapters right now that, that they're all the one hundred and six chapters have signed those beneficial use agreements that you heard about in the uh, in the uh, video. Um, two of them. One to kind of uh, on that the supply of how they go, how the chapters are, should supply the drinking water, and, and the other one is uh, on how the chapters should distribute the containers and the the disinfection tablets. So those those services should go forth right now and and, and be being used. There's and <clears throat> again, there's no definitive lists or maps on where these services should be delivered. Again, the IHS utilized the data that we had uh, to uh, to estimate the need, but the, there may not be 100% accurate on the locations, and so uh, it's kind of, it's 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 hope, it dependent on a partnership that the chapters would hope to reach reach out and kind of uh, and work with the CHRs, the community health representatives, to kind of identify uh, residents, uh, people living in their chapter uh, who have no uh, piped water access, and kind of make them aware of these services. We've done quite a bit of outreach in on the radio and in the the newspaper. Um, about the project, and uh, sometimes people, when people come in, we're uh, to, to kind of responding to that that outreach. They're they're getting feedback from chapters that they were under the chapter is unaware of the services that need to be provided. So hopefully, by you by attending this training, will be fully aware of them and be able to to deliver the services that that have been supported by this project. Um, <clears throat> And again, if you don't know where the chapter, the homes of piped water are and you need some support, you should kind of contact the Navajo area IHS district so that they can get with you to explain the data that we have and to kind of go over that. And, and maybe then you can work with them to uh, improve upon that data. It's not just important for this project, it's also important for planning and, and, uh, des and designing uh, more uh, substantial uh, interventions that can bring piped water access closer to people's homes uh, so, so that we don't have to, uh, people do not have to travel the distances that they're traveling uh, now. All right, moving on. So this is just a, a visualization of the map that uh, we have for the piped water access. This was done back in May. We've recently, uh, Commander Ryan Clapp is on the, on the uh, in the meeting today. We've gone through a, another analysis and we've, uh, we, we've come up with actually a little bit, a number that's a little bit less than the project was based upon. Uh, the homes of low piped water, so we're at 9,600 homes uh, before, and we're now uh, a little bit over 8,000 homes. And so uh, that was by uh, re reassessing the data. But it, this just picture is just to show you that the IHS has GIS data that it's, that it's collected to kind of identify uh, where the homes are and what services are needed. Again, okay, so this is just going to go over a little bit about the, the how the services were, were allocated. Again, uh, the, um, the home occupants and density, I said about four is 3.8 and is developed by census data in consultation with DCD. And there's the, there's the calculation or number of homes without piped water times 3.8, and that's the estimated number of people. And again, we use this um, estimate to estimate the number of water containers, the, the, the subsidized volume of water, and the, uh, the number of water disinfection tablets. 
Okay, so this this question we, we've we had in the chat just before like we answered, uh, but it's one container per person living in the home with no piped water, and a, a person is just exactly what it says. It's an adult. It's a child. It's an infant. It, it's uh, that that's what it means. So three people living in the house, three containers. Um, now these containers are intended, as I mentioned, to a small to haul small volumes of water to be used for cooking for approximately uh, drinking and cooking for approximately one week. And again, more water is needed to promote health. And that, this is a critical message that we hope you hear that more water is needed to, to promote health. And, and, and these points should be being utilized for that. And you'll see off to the right, uh, some of the other size containers that are, are typically uh, available on the Navajo. They are not being supplied through this project, um, but uh, they, they typically are available. Now, if there are limitations in your chapter from people who are coming to haul water because they do not have access to these 55 gallons, 200 gallons, or 300 gallon containers. You should be providing that feedback uh, through the reporting mechanisms that we'll review here in this uh, in this call. Uh, in that way, then um, DC, the Division of Community Development, and IHS, we can look to see what resources could become available to assist to procure additional containers for the, the purposes of hauling. We don't have anything identified right now because we have not received a significant number of requests indicating there is a need for these larger containers. But if we do get data like this, we could we could definitely uh, look into that and look for ways to kind of uh, provide those to chapters so that they can distribute them. So again, this looking at the bottom here, chapters should allow various size containers to be filled. They should collect homeowners data and share it with the Navajo area IHS districts. That data doesn't have to come back to, to Western Solutions. It doesn't have to come back to the Wilson Yees group. It doesn't have to come back to the, the IHS headquarters. Where it need, really would be beneficial is for the chapters to share that information with the, lo the local IHS uh, engineers uh, there so that they can work to kind of develop more robust solutions to provide uh, improved uh, water access to, the, to, to people living in homes without piped water. And, but what the, you should be reporting and, and tracking is the, the number of containers distributed per month and also the water disinfection tablets. And we'll, um, that was mentioned in the video uh, as well. And we'll touch upon it a little bit more. All right. So again, this is uh, just pointing out again that the, the, the volume, the water volume was seven gallons per person per day, which is basically two times the World Health Organization like survival volume. And so that's about 200 gallons for a, a, a four person family per week. So someone coming with a 200 gallon container looking like this, you know, that's that's good. So they got this and maybe their family of four and they have they have then on the side they have four um, five gallon containers. So in total, though, they, they have uh, 220 gallons worth of water they'd be hauling back. So they fill this one and then they fill those those four smaller containers. They would they, they should, you know, if uh, water disinfection tablets would be advisable to be placed into those because of maybe the levels of chlorine that are uh, kind of uh, available at the water point. Uh, and um, they they could pres presumably do that uh, every week. So I will touch a little bit upon the, the water disinfection tablets uh, and kind of the purpose. So the purpose is to, to kill disease causing agents in the self hauled water um, and, uh, and, the, and reduce risks of people becoming ill after consuming contaminated self hauled water. Now the water systems usually have chlorine in them and those, that, those chlorine levels are sufficient to keep the water safe. Those chlorine levels are, monitor, are kind of monitored by the Navajo EPA and are, uh, are adequate for supply of water from a piped water system. Now, in some cases, when you haul water, the chlorine levels may be, may be lower than are needed to ensure safety of the hauled water once you put it inside a container and bring it to your home. There are many places where your containers can become dirty and can, can become uh, and, and maybe transmit uh, illness to the bacteria and, and viruses to the water that will be transmitted to you and then you may become ill as a result of that and so the chlorine is like an added protection kind of like a seat belt to add a protection to 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 ensure that uh, that water remains safe through its journey you know after you collect it into your house and storage and then you know before it's used 
uh, there was an evaluation done of the, the free chlorine levels by the uh, IHS field team. And the results of that evaluation were provided to the chapters. And using that evaluation, we, we, we recommended uh, whether or not chlorine tablets should be provided or not. And we've recommended that they do be provided at 91 chapters of 91 of the 106 chapters. So perhaps your chapter, you know, doesn't have, you don't, you don't know what these chlorine tablets are and you don't, you haven't heard about it. Maybe yours is one of the chapters that wasn't recommended. If it was recommended a tablet be placed there, there should be a sign similar to this that's kind of been placed in, in out at your, your organization, uh, out near the water point. Let's move on here. Again, so why the tablet? So uh, we looked at rates of the of Navajo area gastrointestinal illness, and, and they are, are about 40% higher when compared with all uh, other IHS areas. And, and GI illnesses are, could, may be attributed attributable to uh, contaminated uh, drinking water. Uh, and the rate, so the rates of both in hospitalization and outpatients, as you see there are 40 and 50% are higher in the Navajo uh, area compared to other areas. So we cannot, you know, there's no direct link between consuming, uh, you know, unchlorinated water and this outcome. More studies would have to be done to kind of make that causal link uh, stronger. But there is indication that, uh, that uh, of, of illness that, that may be attributable to uh, a risk that could be uh, addressed by chlorine. And so you'll see there in the, in the photo right there, those are the chlorine tablets. I, I have one, I have them right here too as well. Um, they are a, a small tablet that puts that, that goes inside of the container and you shake it up and I think you wait for 30 minutes and then consume the, the water can be consumed. Um, Again, there's no assurances that the water hauling containers that you have will be cleaned. And now there's some uh, recommendations on how to disinfect them, uh, but those are actions that you know, you'll know you need to take on your own. It may be challenging to re remember to do those things each time to, how, to disinfect them. Uh, and, and in that case, then you know, reliance on the tablet would, would, uh, would, would, would help in that way. All right, so I move on here. Again, this is how we've estimated the number of tablets. It's uh, that's one tablet each time someone comes back, and and so anyway, it's a large number of tablets. It's 3.2 million tablets. Uh, so let's each visit of the 37,000 people coming every week uh, for two years, um, and so we have supplied it. We've per we've procured about half of those, and and the usage of these tablets has been really low, pr primarily because of. Um, of uh, concerns about the safety of the tablets because people are not, the, the, what, what is this and what are you putting in my drinking water? But also the, of the taste of the, of the, uh, that, that the chlorine imparts upon the water. But so, you know, for safety, again, I'm gonna just we'll reiterate the, the utility, the, the Navajo e, e, NTUA, and there are other utilities that are um, serving chapters as well. There's, I think there's one, one or two other, uh, three three other utilities that serve uh, chapters. They, they should be monitoring and adjusting chlorine levels for the public water system uh, for compliance under the Safe Drinking Water Act. And the, the, US, the CPA, um, the, the, also, the other thing is that these tablets here have been reviewed by the US EPA for an approved for sale in the United States. So it's, a, it's something that's gone through uh, a review process uh, and uh, has been, uh, confirmed for safe for, for utilization for the purposes that's, that are described on the label. Um, and we, the field team, the Atchis field team did assess the free chlorine levels there to ensure that if we put a tablet in it, over chlorination wouldn't be uh, a problem. Uh, and, and we provided kind of a, a lot of training one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Each chapter should have had a one-on-one -on -one training with uh, one of the, uh, the the field team that was that was there uh, last year on this and and if there's uh, a need for retraining on that, uh, fortunately, John Hopkins University now is is offering uh, the chapters training on on providing kind of ongoing chlorine level assessments um, of self walled water sources. And you'll see on this slide here, uh, if you're interested in in receiving some training about this, learning about the uh, about chlorine, how it's going to improve health, and how to monitor the, the chlorine levels uh, for the self haul. Uh, I recommend you uh, contact Ashley Lee, and she's uh, with the John Hopkins Center for American Indian Health uh, in Fort Defiance, and her uh, email is uh, listed on this slide. 
uh, they're going to be re recruiting some uh, chapters to participate in the that program with them. And so uh, that this would be a great opportunity for your chapter to learn more about it. All right. <clears throat> So again, some of the challenges with the, the chlorine is the taste and odor. You know, it, chlorine sometimes does change the taste of the and odor of the water. Uh, you know, this chlorine taste can be removed if the water is left in a lightly covered container, maybe in a refrigerator with a light cover on it for a few hours, it comes out. Um, you know, you wouldn't recommend leaving it in an open environment where there could be, uh, you know, uncovered, where there could be uh, flies and dust that could contaminate the water. Um, and, and additionally, also, there's also some public uh, public communication resources are, are available. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to turn it to, to Wilson, and he's going to take uh, take the lead, the role from here. Thanks. David, David, a couple of questions in the chat. Maybe we could. Okay. Uh, one, one from uh, Benali. Um, asking about if, if the regional director is not responding, who is the next person um, to reach out to or, or talk to? Regional director, let me see. I don't know who that is. If the regional director. Hmm. I think in regards to. Yeah, I'm not sure who, uh, what, what director she's referring to. Is it IHS? Maybe she could type a clarifying question. Is it the IHS? um person or is it someone else um let's see the ihs okay yeah so if you, you can email um navajo safe water at nndcd.org oh. i don't know if you heard me there i was my internet went not stable for a second can you hear me Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I would email uh, Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. That will come to me. That will come to a couple of people at the IHS headquarters. Uh, come to Jason Jansen, who's the coordinator over there, and we will kind of get that get that iron ironed out. Um, I see. Also, it said it would be great if GIS data is shared with chapters so we can use it for our information too. Yes, I totally concur with that comment. And that's what we're working on. We're working on having platforms to do that. Uh, right now, the, the area does not have technically the, 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 the tools to be able to share that, but we're, we're advocating for them to do that. And, and so if you're hearing, this, uh, you're hearing this presentation and you agree with that comment uh, that, uh, that's being stated there, I would recommend that you tell that to the IHS area, um, local staff and, uh, and that you would like to be uh, the, the GIS information to be shared with you. And um, uh, the IHS headquarters is very supportive of that. That's the purpose for the, why we have that kind of information. And we're, we're, our goals are to, to be able to share it with uh, uh, users like yourselves uh, to be able to assist in identifying the, the sanitation needs. Yep, there's the email right there. And it looks like uh, Benali had made a request earlier to get a copy of the shape file, but um, was not responded to. Um, silent from IHS. IHS's end. Those silent IHS guys. Okay, we're going to make sure they're not silent. So uh, Ryan <coughs> Clapp is on this call right now. So he is the guy. He's our. He's uh, the guy who's uh, can figure out how to make you a shape file. I'm not good at making shape files. I'm not you know, cutting cutting things, but hmm. but. Right. Okay. I did Thank also. You. Do that. I got a direct message from Kenny Victor, um, and the question was um, pertaining to containers. Uh, where do we get large and extra large containers for elders who are hauling their own water? Yeah, so this this is what I was re reporting to. If you can <clears throat> gather up um, from your chapter how many containers you think you need and the sizes you think that that um, the elders can accommodate in their vehicles for hauling. You should provide those to, uh, again, that email address, Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. And we can look to incorporate them into, the, into this project or you know, kind of seek uh, some other funding sources for them. So if you come, there, there are none yet procured uh, and they're not, they're not, I mean, they're not readily available from the IHS right now. So this would be a, quote, a new project or an augmentate or an augmenting the current project, but that's something that uh, we'd be willing to look into. 
And this, a qu before we move on, a, a clarifying question from SM, um, just that this program differs from Dig Deep. Yes, we're partnering with Dig Deep. Dig Deep is a member of the Water Access Coordination Group. It's a larger group that's uh, uh, you know helping to coordinate this effort. It's different than Dig Deep's program. Dig Deep is providing a, a water hauling service. I think it delivers water to your to your home and also provides some containers as well uh, for uh, in put it for placing in, in your in your yard or close to your home. To, su to supply. So this is a different uh, program. Okay. Thank you. So we can uh, now move on to Wilson Yee from Weston Solutions. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'll be covering uh, the, the support work that we're doing um, in compiling the, the reporting that chapters are doing um, every month. And um, and kind of going over, you know, the steps that that um, you know are part of what um, chapter responsibilities are for, you know, this this project. So, you know, every month, as as was mentioned on the on the refresher training video, um, the by the fifth of every month, we're encouraging every chapter to fill out forms for you know distribution of containers and tablets, and those forms are available either online, um, sorry for the blurry video, but if you go to the um, NavajoSafeWater.org website, you can look for uh, a link that um, says chapter reporting and it'll take you to either the online form where you can fill out the distribution, um, you know, uh, monthly distribution for the previous month, um, either online or you can download a paper form, fill that out, scan it and email it to Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org. Um, and either way, you know, we'll be uh, compiling that information on a, in a monthly report and also quarterly reports. So um, additionally, if, if for some reason, you know, those online forms or, or paper forms are inaccessible or, you know, for whatever reason, we also, Western Solutions also contacts each chapter uh, during the first two weeks of every month. So after the fifth, if, if um, you know, we're not seeing a report from a chapter, we'll reach out and you know, try to contact you via phone or, or email. And a, a lot of you, um, if you've you know, involved in this at, at, in your chapter, you've probably heard from us calling you. Um, but we also uh, ask those same questions about uh, you know, container and tablet distribution and, and, and report it for you. Um, we also, at that point, try to ask for additional information um, that could help, um, you know, benefit the program and, and how it's implemented. And so your, your comments about how well things are working or not working um, are, are, are very important. And so we'll, we'll reach out to you. But, um, you know, you also have the opportunity to provide those comments um, anytime by emailing um, NavajoSafeWater at nndcd.org or those paper forms can be used to, um, you know, provide feedback. So um, just looking at, um, you know, this, this, this project has been um, off the ground since July of last year. And, um, you know, if you look at when all the water points were actually up and running, we're talking about February, but um, since April, 2021, um, over, and this is a good, this is, you know, um, kind of indication of, of how reporting is going, but um, over half of the chapters have provided uh, monthly container and tablet reports, which is actually a great improvement from prior to April 2021, where every month less than half of the chapters, um, you know, would, would provide reporting. And so, you know, we want to encourage, um, you know, continued um, so, um, reporting of, of distribution that from, from there we can gauge how well, you know, the project's working, if there's any other, you know, ways that we can improve, um, you know, access to these resources. So, um, again, you know, great improvements since April, 2021 and, and hoping to see it continued. Um, you know, that said, uh, since the beginning of the project, we have not received data from two chapters. Um, as of last month. 
So there are still some um, chapters we've never um, actually gotten any data from. And, and um, so I just wanted to kind of highlight that, you know, we're still, um, you, we still need feedback from, from some chapters. And next slide. Okay, so let's go through some of the distribution trends that we've um, been capturing um, as part of our um, support for, um, you know, capturing distribution. So through the first quarter 2021, so that's March 2021, um, from December through March, we've seen, you know, an a increase in container distribution so that by the end of March, uh, we've got 23.8% of the total containers, these are the five gallon containers, the blue containers that we talked about. Um, we've got 23.8 of them distributed um, uh, throughout the Navajo Nation. We are at the point of March, 2021, we were missing data from 12 chapters. So between March and, and June, you know, great job, you know, those 12, cha 10 chapters that, that provided reporting, but we still, like, like I mentioned, we still missing chapter, uh, reporting for two chapters. And um, next slide. Okay, so then looking at tablets, um, you know, uh, Captain Harvey had mentioned, you know, the difficulties um, with, with, you know, usage of, of you know, tablets at, at you know, uh, chapter levels. And, and this is, you know, reflected in the numbers we're seeing here as well through March 2021, only 2.37% of the tablets had been distributed. Um, and, you know, we're missing data from 11 chapters as of March. Uh, and overall, that, you know, means that 91 chapters, um, you know, out of 91 chapters that provided tablets, you know, 82 responded. And, you know, in general, we're seeing a lot of comments from chapters about you know, the, the odor and taste of, you know, um, the tablets and impacting, you know, whether or not water haulers, you know, prefer to use it or not. So, you know, again, you know, this is important for us to kind of hear uh, feedback and also, um, you know, keep, keep giving us information about, you know, how, how well this is working. Next slide. Okay, so I think, you know, we're just kind of wrapping it up um, for uh, first quarter, um, you know, just in general, and in the next couple of slides will go over water usage, but in general, all services are being underutilized. So, you know, the, we just talked about containers being distributed at 23.8%, tablets, you know, below 3%. So, you know, this is underutilization of those resources, and you just want to kind of make sure that everyone understood that. Um, the water volumes, which, you know, I'll go show you some, some graphs in the next couple slides, um, are significantly less than the World Health Organization recommendations. Um, and these are, you know, through the TWP. So we're only looking at TWP. Uh, we're only talking about TWP um, usage at this point, but you know, all TWP um, usage is below the estimated seven gallons per person per day. And, um, you know, we're, we're not exactly sure why this is happening, um, but, you know, your, you know, chapters are the best source of information. So please, if you can help us understand, um, you know, what we're seeing, that, that's, that, that would be critical for us to know. Um, what this means, though, is that, you know, the reduced risk of contamination, contaminated hauled water is, is not being realized, meaning that, you know, um, the, the, the goal of, of making sure that water, ha water haulers have access to safe water uh, may be, uh, we, we may not be meeting the goal the way that we, we'd like to. Um, and again, this all depends on, you know, if, if the information that you can provide us um, can help us understand that better. Um, and then lastly, I mentioned this a couple of times, you know, consistent chapter reporting is needed uh, to, to continue to track progress. So, you know, please, you know, we encourage feedback, not only monthly, but, you know, during these, these types of refresher trainings, you know, this is a good venue for, for feedback as well. So um, please, next slide. Okay, so 
Um, looking first at PWPs, so these are the, the larger, these accommodate the larger containers. Um, this is a graph showing usage from August. Um, this, this is a very first, you know, the rollout of, of the project. And, and not all uh, PWPs were reporting at that time or functioning at that time. Um, and looking through March 2021, which is, you know, the first quarter, we'll see an overall um, kind of a, a decline uh, from August through December and then a slight increase from, from there. But in general, just, you know, we also have on this slide um, the, you know, indications of where the World Health Organization recommendations of seven gallons per, per day per person and four gallons per day per person, which is, um, you know, basic cooking needs only um, and, you know, survival drinking and, and basic hygiene, those levels are shown on this figure. And as you can see, as of November 20th, through the first quarter, um, all of the, ch uh, the chapters, and, and this is all compiled at the regional level. So these are, you know, Xinli agency, Crown Point agency, et cetera, were below the, the survival drinking um, consumption levels. So um, water volumes used at PWPs were, you know, between 1 to 1.3 to 3.5 gallons per person per day, which is, again, below even survival. Um, and next slide, please. Yeah, you may want to just look here. The next slide, this little arrow down at the bottom here, this is where the data on the next slide lies, is at one to zero. Right, thanks for, thanks for that. Uh, so, you know, just, this is looking at TWPs. So these are the new, the new water points that were um, just installed as part of this, uh, part of this project. Those same levels of four gallons and seven gallons per person per day are not even on this chart because all of this consumption was well below one gallon per person per day at, at all, uh, you know, agencies here. So, um, you know, we could talk about the trends, but I think overall, you know, this is showing a, a pretty significant underuse of TWPs and, and um, you know, Frankly, I think we we like to know, you know, from from chapter level, you know, what you're seeing and 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 you know your your feedback would help us understand what, what you know these trends that we're seeing here. But overall, um, well below um, even basic survival, drinking, hygiene, and basic cooking needs. Right, and that feedback can be provided um, online through the form that, as you saw in the video, where you can type it in or. If uh, Western Solutions calls you, you can give that verbally to them and they can record it. Right. So before we go to chapter support resources, are there any comments or questions? It looks like there's some. Look, we have some some comments. Uh, Wilson, um, there's a, a question from Benali about which chapter, I think which uh, on one of your earlier slides on on reporting or reporting data. Uh, Benali, if you want to clarify that. Um, it looks like so Crown Point is getting the most the most usage there. Is that oh so those are those um graphs if you're referring to the last two um we're talking about um you know the, the regional level so crown point agency um is actually I guess these colors aren't showing up too well. Um, actually, if you're looking at the TWP, um, it's actually Fort Defiance Agency that's got the, the highest usage in this. And um, uh, Captain Hardy, if you can go to the PWP. And um, yeah, so if your question was about PWPs, um, you know, so the Chinli agencies got the highest usage for PWPs. I see SM is raising his hand. I don't know if SM, if you want to unmute yourself, you can ask a question if you like. Oh, I had a question. Um, so like I, I just saw Western Agency, so the number of people who do not have a water line or whatever to their house 
even though they use some of this, um, what do you call it? TW, uh, TWPs or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They're not utilizing, is it? They're not utilizing those or what? Yes, yeah, so, so basically this, this data reflects the usage at the water points that have that are being subsidized underneath this project. So there's two types. One is one is a new one. This T, TWP, a newer one, a smaller one that's been put in place in the last uh, year, and 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 then the another one is an existing permanent watering point that's at the at co-located at the chapter at chapter house. So these are basically what these results are saying is that the water coming out of there. Is if we we're, and we're comparing these gallons per person per day to the number of homes without piped water. So if the number of homes without piped water in the chapter is correct, and the occupancy density is around four per people per home, then the conclusion we arrive at is that people are not using enough water to support okay. uh, life. That's, that, that's 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 what the conclusion is. Now, what's not included here, and it's been pointed out, it would be clear, is that. There are many places where other places that aren't being subsidized by the the uh, this project where people go to get water on the Navajo Nation. They go to get water in Gallup. Uh, they go to get water in Winslow. They go to get water, I think, uh, on the in the border in in, in maybe even in, in uh, Flagstaff. <clears throat> and so uh, those uh, volumes are not reflected here. Uh, and okay. and also uh, water vo being held from unregulated, unsafe sources are not reflected here. So physiology human physiology doesn't change if people didn't drink this much water they would be you know seriously ill and would you know didn't have this much water and so they people are getting water from someplace um uh, what what we're trying to point out is that this water is subsidized it's available and it's regulated and so uh it it, it and, and it's closer to your home uh the the water points that we've installed have shortened travel distances from like 52 miles round trip to like six, uh, like 16. So, so they're in a, in a chapter looking at chapters that didn't have water points before that now they do. And so we realize that people's behavior may not have changed. People are used to kind of collecting water at, uh, at when they go to Gallup okay. to pick up things or when they go. Okay. And it may be, may be good to start talking about, Hey, Come on down to the chapter and collect your water here, and then go to get. Don't, then don't haul your trailer to Gallup to 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 uh, to fill up your your water container because the water is here and it's subsidized. At least it's subsidized, and we didn't go the two year piece. It's going to be subsidized probably at least through February of 2023, and then uh, we'll be you know in the discussions about what to do after that. But um, but uh, you know that's what that's that's what we're trying to get across here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, a question from Alberta Ballard um, about so, you know, do we keep tablets at the chapter or do we give to individuals? Yeah. So, we've, we've, the training has been suggested to keep the tablets at the chapter because, because the, the, this container has about 200 tablets in it. I'll just pop it open here and see. So, there it is right here. And it's got a bunch of tablets in here. So, if you like gave a hand fill out, and just dump them in, in your container, you would be like, it would be heavily chlorinated and it would, you know, maybe cause people to be, you know, upset stomach from the heavy, heavy chlorination. And, you know, again, they're, they are, if you give them to people, they're now not in a child safe container. They do kind of look like aspirin. I mean, so there's kind of like different ways in which this could be a, be a problem for, 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 you know, exposure to, to the tablet. So, I, I, we've recommended that the tablet just be supplied by the chapter when the, the, the uh, residents bring back their containers. So the residents bring back their containers. There is an added step. They need to come in and say, hey, I'm here. Can I get the tablet? Yep. You, you put the tablets in there and then you record that down, you know, who, who took the tablets. We can kind of get some tracking on how they're being used. So yeah, that's the, the deal. Now, can these tablets be used in larger containers? Yes. And, and you know if if you're you want to do some math you know you can go ahead so these tablets are five gallons for one so a 50 gallon container would need how many 10 so you could put 10 in a 50 gallon container if it's there but you need to know the size of the container and be sure about that and so uh, since uh, you know we haven't provided that level of training with it we haven't 
you know, kind of suggested that 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 should be, you know, you should be doing that. But if the chapter feels comfortable with estimating the volumes of the containers that are coming in and using a, a uh, using, you know, a five gallons for one tablet and multiplying the, the volume and times the number of tablets, they can do that. If you would like some help to figure that out, you can again email Navajo uh, Safewater at nndcd.org and we can help your chapter individually with coming up with a schedule for uh, providing tablets for larger size containers. So that's that, that's not a problem. So thank you mm -hmm. for that. So a question from Jay Chi. Uh, Who is responsible for submitting reports at the chapter level? Uh, yeah, we'd like to know that too. Uh, so that, that's that's a question. We don't, there's, we, we have the beneficial use agreements. Uh, if, at your chapter, your, your chapter has signed, a, all chapters, or you're, I'm not sure if you're, you're from a chapter or a technical assistance provider, uh, has signed a beneficial use agreements. Uh, there is a, in, there's a name indicated on there. And so if, if you're unsure you could eat, eat, and you don't have access to your beneficial use agreement, again, you could email Navajo Safe Water at nndcd.org and ask for the, your copy of your beneficial use agreement. And you will see the person who signed it there. Presumably that person would be the person responsible for reporting or would have delegated that responsibility to someone else in your chapter. And so that's, that's the way it you know, sh should work. And then, you know, if it's not, then you can, uh, you know, uh, change that and then let, let us know again at Navajo and uh, at Navajo Safe Water at NDCD.org. So we can update our records on who we should be contacting uh, on, a, on a monthly basis to get the reports. Right. And, and I'll just say that, you know, um, it's, it's either been chapter manager or CSCs or someone that's been delegated by those two positions, um, community service uh, coordinator. And, um, you know, that said, you know, there have been you know, some turnover at this at the chapter level, you know, staff that were trained to do the um, reporting may, you know, no longer be working there. Um, all that said, you know, we do reach out and, um, you know, we, we reach out by email and by phone to, you know, the general uh, phone number, the general email and um, try to get a hold of someone. So if you know, you're at a chapter where there has been some turnover that's impacted your ability to report, you know, we're, we're still, we're, we're still reaching out to you um, at least, you know, three times uh, per month during that two week period. Um, so, um, you know, you, you may be hearing from someone named Brooke from uh, Western Solutions. That's who, you know, we've assigned to, to be doing the outreach. But um, yeah, again, any questions can be uh, directed to Navajo Safe Water and NDC.org. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, just running running through a couple comments before we we move on. A uh, uh, Benali commented that um, it's very limited on where uh, Navajo can access water, and the very long lines, which are time consuming. Um, Darius Newman commented that a lot of the communities use the 200 gallon containers, and it takes which take a lot of time to fill. Um, and they were told that they could not use tablets for any other container. Yeah. Um, you know, Gloria Skeet has commented that chapters need to assign someone at the chapter to be responsible for TWP and reporting. And Ulysses commented that um, in agreement that there are some potentially harmful effects of heavy chlorination. Uh, therefore, trainings like this are vital and resources like NavajoSafeWater.org and reaching out to the contacts that, that are listed here. Um, and, and finally, Carissa Wood has commented that uh, um, at their chapter, it's most individuals work during the day in their home until later in the evening or are home only on weekends. And with the chapter being open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., it limits the time community members are able to haul water and access from our TWP, which, which um, they're thinking is an issue at a lot of chapters. Right. <laughs> yeah. Availability. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And so, I mean, that, that would be on that particular case, I think that's a discussion kind of at your chapter level. You know, if, if you're able to staff it for some limited hours on the weekends to kind of get this thing open, uh, that would be a, a great discussion um, come to, to be had. And I, I think on the, the, the chlorine size, the chlorine containers, right, the instructions have been don't put anything, uh, any tablets in anything other than this, uh, this blue gallon, uh, this blue container right here. But um, 
if again, this is kind of if you would like to if your chapter would like to kind of figure out how to put tablets and other ones again email navajo safe water at ndc.org and we'll work with you and i'm sure that the uh, the, the, the hopkins uh, staff who's who are also supporting this would also be happy to work with you on determining that uh that calculation um as well yeah and again uh, there's some comments about the slowness right now, we haven't heard that much uh, in the reporting back that that's an issue. We were aware of that. So if you're, you're experiencing a slow uh, water filling, again, we there's some things we can do, uh, the IHS can do. So you should, again, notify us of that issue uh, at, at Navajo Safe Water at NNDC.org. And we can have you know one of our the local people come out and try to adjust the flow the best that we can. Now, it may be that we cannot adjust it any further based upon the conditions of the, the water point. And, and, and if that's the case, then what we should be doing is looking to kind of upgrade that point to a water loading station. Uh, if you're getting a significant amount of people who would use it if they had higher volumes. And again, you can share that information through this Navajo Safe Water at NNDCD.org. And we can look to prioritize your chapter for those larger stations, which will you know, take you know a year or so to get installed, but we can get that, uh, get that moving. And then uh, Benali has asked, is it possible to do testing for other containers? Do testing? What's that? To, to do uh, to do testing for other containers, I think testing. Yeah, well, we have to have. We we don't have any larger containers. So if a chapter has like a large container, like they do, like the test, like a two hundred gallon one in their yard, then we could. We can go to there and we have some chlorine test strips, and we could, you know, take the measurements and or the chlorine the chlorine kit, uh, not the test strip. We have a chlorine monitor. We could do that. Yes. Um, that's that's a possibility, right. but the the, the, can, the containers we don't have, so that have to be supplied by the chapter to kind of like you know for, to do that testing. Great, I, th I think we can move on to uh, resources, recommendations, and then um, yeah, kind of our evaluation. All right, so that's just this. I just point this out here again that we've been saying this email address like uh, I've been like a like a broken record for mesothelioma or something like that. But anyway, um, this uh, Navajo Safe Water at NNDCD.org where you should email. Now, again, uh, Jason Jansen is on the phone. He's the one that is triaging this mostly. Uh, so, you know, if you feel you're, you're not getting it here, you could go right to Jason and say, hey, what up? Uh, so that's also a possibility. Uh, we, we, his, and it, you could even call him and start uh, messing with him that way. Uh, the other is... Um, uh, the community health representatives, you know, they have been uh, very supportive and, and uh, of assisting chapters in uh, understanding about the program and helping them to kind of promote the program. Uh, again, I, I placed uh, Majeline uh, Begay's uh, uh, name here and her email address, as well as a telephone number to get a hold of her. Um, additionally, the, the, the CHRs are staffing the uh, HCOC, the Health Command Operations Center telephone number that is on some of the information that that uh, that they call that um, the public calls into. And, and we'll move on to uh, kind of the recommendations that we heard from, from chapters and, and holding on to, I'll just kind of walk through these just to ensure water point services are open and available to residents during all chapter operational hours. Um, promote service availability by utilizing all available methods, uh, meetings, flyers, the chapter websites, um, a lot of those resources, um, flyers are available on NavajoSafeWater.org. Um, report monthly water container and disinfection tablet distribution. Uh, report issues with water point operation or availability of containers or water disinfection tablets um, to the aforementioned what, uh, email, NavajoSafeWater.NNDCD.org, which Mr. Jason Jansen is uh, monitoring. And seek out technical assistance and support from Indian Health Service, IHS, Navajo Area District Offices, and your community health representatives, your local CHRs. Right. All right. Well, we've got, I think, Gabe, we've got a couple. This is just, again, we put the website and the thing again. We've got, if there's, any, if there's no questions right now, we could launch a poll. We don't want to tell you you're taking quizzes here, but we could launch a poll. Let's see here. There's one right there. I'm going to launch. Uh, let's see here. A little poll here. Yeah, be on the lookout for a poll. It's just it be uh, popping up on your screen here. That kind of like helps to figure out if you've been listening. <laughs> and so the winner, like to... uh, 
The winner, the winner can talk to Jason Jansen about a raffle prize. Yeah, the winner can talk to Jason. I don't know what he's got down there, but you can go knock on his door, see if he can get you some. He can get you some, some additional chlorine tablets. <laughs> All right, so the first question here is who can access free water, uh, water free of charge and water storage containers provided by the Navajo Safe Water Project? So, um, so it's, I, I see Ooh. one issue already, A and D. So A is... So the first is uh, people uh, with cisterns at their homes. Yes, they, they, they can. People live, living outside the Navajo Nation? No. People receiving water from NTUA water pipes uh, to their homes? Uh, no. Uh, people with no piped water in their homes? Yes. Um, and unfortunately, the A and the D didn't come across. The answer to this one is A and D. So it was the first, the first one and the, um, and the, uh, the people living in, in their homes. So cistern systems and, and that. All right. And then this next one here is um, which sources prov uh, provide the safest hauled water for human consumption? So windmill wells, private wells, natural flowing springs, or chapter, uh, chapter or NTA operated watering points. Yeah, so people are, are, are leaning towards that. Um, you know, those other sources are traditional sources. Um, the, the, the main concern with those sources is that they're, is that they're, not, they're not monitored and hence uh, you, their safety cannot be assured. And, 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 and most times the contaminants you cannot taste in, or, or see, uh, such as arsenic and uranium. And, and those are, um, have been shown to show de detrimental effects. So let me uh, end the poll here and see if I can bring up the next, but I don't want to show I don't want to share results. So let's see if I can do another one here. All right, here's another poll question poll. What is required by someone seeking to receive free water, water containers, and water disinfection tablets? So the uh, question, a home site lease, identification card. You need, they need to provide information to the chapter uh, including head of household names and the people number of people living and the home location and description or all of the above. So yeah, we got four people kind of chiming in that one. That's it, it's, it is that we don't need a, you do not need a home site lease. Okay. And you don't, we're not, we're not even, you know, as far as the federal government requires, we're not saying you need, you need an identification card. That could be something the chapter could decide to have, but all they need to do is kind of come in and say, look, I don't have a, uh, Piped water in my house. I live generally here, uh, and I like to get access to this. So it's a, it's a, there's a low, low, low bar for, uh, for what's required. Someone basically having the, the courage to kind of come in and just ask for the the, the support. Again, uh, then how can chapters spread the word about, um, spread the word about about the free water services? And and you're right. Uh, all of the above, the, the 12 people, what are the, all of the above, promote availability of water source containers on the chapter's website, announce the availability during chapter meetings, ask CHRs to help spread the word, you know, place announcements on the tribe's video screen outside the, outside the thing. And I'm sure there could be other more inventive ways than, than have suggested in this, uh, in this thing. So this question here. So let me move, let me move on here. We, the, the, the polling questions, we only have uh, two more. So not to scare people. Um, this one here, again, what size containers can be filled with the free water? Anyway, and so hopefully we got that message across here. What size containers can be filled with free water? Yeah, all of the above. It's all of the above. Yeah, yeah, because the uh, more water is needed than just a five gallon container. So it's all of the above can be filled. And again, the uh, wire disinfection tablets needed. Again, all of the above is the right answer. Yeah. All right. People thought of that. And we just got one more question here. We just want to go for, let's see here, poll, launch poll. Okay, this is a multiple choice one. Okay, so. What is the responsibility of chapters under the Navajo Safe Water Project? Um, provide water 
at no charge to Navajo Nation residents living in homes with no piped water, distribute water storage containers and if required tablets, collect shared user data, report monthly on water disinfection tablets, promote their use with available information. So everyone should be clicking all the way across. All of those are great things to do. That that that, that the chapter can can do. So great. Well, the poll worked. All right. Well, that's. I don't want to. We don't want to spend too much. I think we're right at the time, probably. Yeah. We're, yeah. So. Right here. Yeah. So I guess that's. Uh, if this is any more questions, Gabe, you see any more out there? Uh, questions, quick comments uh, uh, from Benali about um, getting water ads up, uh, wear and tear in vehicles and time taken to get the water. Um, so certainly not free. Um, and that Navajo, Navajo population has increased and uh, needs uh, have increased, uh, hence the lawn lines. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's long lines, but I don't believe there's long lines at the water points that we're talking about here, because uh, we're not seeing those, uh, th those issues. So the long lines may in well fact be at the off reservation points. And I know someone can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but if we were seeing long lines, then that means that the water meter data that we're getting from NTUA is totally incorrect, um, because we're not seeing uh, much usage out of that. In fact, uh, like uh, at about 22 chapters, there was zero usage in the month of April, like zero, like the meter not moving. Um, so, so I think maybe those long lines could be taken, it could be somewhat lessened by people using these other sources. Um, and again, the, uh, the, the wear and tear into vehicles, uh, presumably the, the chapter house if you can get there, because there's the issues with the accessibility during the hours, but if you can get there, is likely closer than the off reservations point, and it will reduce the wear and tear on, on the vehicles. So that's kind of a, a motivating, should be a motivating factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Um, this is Joanne Yazi Piochi, uh, G Chapter President. I'm sorry, I'm running behind. I'm just there was other meetings that were canceled. So what I was just going to comment. I, apparently, there was probably talk about long lines. Um, here in the Chi area, you know, Page is four miles away. So that is where you see a lot of long lines. We do have a watering point that was put in last summer here in the Chi. It is used, um, you know, I see people use it once in a while, but um, because of just, you know, how there's not a lot of water coming out versus when you go into town, that comes out quick. So that could be where the long lines are. So I just wanted to comment on that just yep. because I heard that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So if you thank get, you. if, if Litchi, if the, again, if, um, if there is if the, the water flow rates, we can try to do some adjustments. We know that they, they were designed, uh, we, uh, the, Indian, the Indian Health Service working with NTUA uh, designed the water points um, so that they didn't uh, have, um, they, they impacted the, uh, the, 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 the NTUA water, water um, station, the, the NTUA water system as little as possible because we didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of analysis on that. So uh, they may in fact be limiting. But uh, it, if, it, if it looks like there could be some support, uh, need for uh, a, a, large, a, a, flow rate, um, a larger flow rate at the chapter, then that, that should be, could be communicated to, to IHS through this uh, Navajo Safe, uh, Safe Water at nndcd.org. And we could put that into the, into the queue. Okay. Okay, right, thank, thank you. you. I just wanted to comment that I think a lot of the people that are, um, hauling the water like from the city page are people hauling it for livestock. You know, and of course for water, for home use as well. And I know that some places are closed on weekends and holidays on the, on the nation. So that's when you get a lot of weekends where you see people hauling large amount of water. Thank you. Right. Thank you for that. Yep, I agree. Yeah. 
Um, but, well, thank you, everybody. If there's no other questions or comments, um, I think we can um, go ahead and conclude for the day. Um, again, this, this video will be hosted on NavajoSafeWater.org. And that's also where you'll find a slew of resources. Um, and we've also shared the email that you can follow up and be in direct communication with uh, Indian Health Service, uh, Jason Jensen. Uh, final thoughts, David and Wilson. Um, uh, Jason, thanks for Oklahoma. thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us. And uh, again, uh, if, if you have questions about this, please reach out to the resources that we've uh, that did to the, to us so that we can assist you in in supporting this or or even other ideas on how to improve upon what's been provided. All right. Well, with that, thank you, everybody, and uh, take good care today. Take care.